What's going on Pinelli fans? This episode is going to cover more metal work here on the Roadrunner. We're going to be working on the rear tail panel, fixing up a bunch of areas here that were really kind of damaged spots, making little patches showing you along the way how I'm doing that. And then down here on this bumper area where there's some really bad rusted out areas that uh, we ultimately fixed in this episode. Stuff like this, making it disappear, making it look better. So stay tuned. It's also just a pretty winter day here in mid-January. Snow's coming down. Mopar is over here freezing their butts off, waiting for their turn to get restored. 69 Roadrunner. Getting all the glory today. Whipped out the Dynaglow today because it's a little cold in the garage. It's already warmed up pretty good. We're at 42 degrees now, so we're getting there. Our goal for today is to fix this whole area where this back panel meets up against the trunk. And you can see how it rusted out pretty good and a lot of it is missing. Um, it kind of follows a trend of going up, down, up, down, up all the way throughout. So we're gonna rebuild all of this, get this welded back in up against the trunk. And so then that can actually seat nicely against there. I'll have to do a little bit over here on this side too. Eventually we've got to patch in this rectangle that's missing out of this back bumper um, panel area. And then there's a structural piece that goes like this that needs to go on top of it, which is a plate that gives strength to the bumper where it connects there too. So we've got to fix that. A Couple little holes some little things around here that are just kind of shoddy and missing and um, pieces like that. And then we can finally go here and tackle this wheel well. Okay, we now need to recreate this. So I cut out these two areas. We're gonna make patches for both of them, but first we're gonna get this metal straightened out, clean up the rust on here, spray weld through primer on these areas where they're gonna get welded onto it. And it's the same kind of process like we did with the gutters and everything else, just no bare metal to bare metal, making sure that we're replacing things, cutting things nicely, using butt welds, but that's what uh, we're about to fix right there. And then we can do the same over here on this side. Get a little bit more of this goop out of here that we found kind of hiding in this area. And uh, we can continue moving forward. All right, I've got this area cleaned up. We're gonna have to make a little patch for this flange here from the inside of the trunk that's missing. And then I'll patch this exterior part for this back panel and get this all matched up looking good. All right, I made a patch for this area. Spray some copper weld through for the back side of it. Let this dry off here in front of the heater for a little bit and then we'll get it welded in. Before I tack in this panel down here, which is gonna lock in where this sits, remember we wanna make sure that we bring this up here to close this big gap. So I'm kind of tweaking it right now because once I weld in this guy down here, once this gets welded in, this is gonna set how much down or up this thing is. And so we're kind of getting this thing tweaked in right now. using a little bit of the body. You can see it's already closed up pretty good. But we just need a little bit more. Okay, now I'm locking this thing into place. We've got a decent gap there. We know exactly now where to bring this panel right up against this flange and make sure that it's not bringing this too high or too low and mess with this gap. All right, we're tacked in. Let's go ahead and release our vice grips and see if we achieve what we wanted to achieve there. Kinda, kinda not really. All right, a little bit more work to be done there. But nonetheless, we tried. Not the prettiest welds ever because there was a bit of a gap I had to fill in, but that'll all grind out nice and easily. You can kind of see as I taper here, just the way it kind of goes as you grind it out. But nonetheless, that's what it's gonna be like. We'll patch in this one here. We'll be good to go. We'll drill a couple holes through here, spot weld this onto this flange, and that's the name of the game right there. All right, so now we're over here at this final piece of the back panel here meeting up to the trunk floor. Quick and easy way, get some cardboard or some paper. I've already gone and traced this out 
and uh, kind of bent it up and mocked it up, but put it right behind it, traced it out, cut it, and this is gonna be the exact template for me to go ahead and cut some metal and uh, do this thing up the way it needs to. And you can see I simulated the bend in it. That's gonna need to, but that's basically it. Get that, put it on some sheet metal, make it happen. And there it is. We'll just get this thing bent to the right shape to fit the contour of this little complex kind of area right here. And then we can go ahead and weld her in. I marked out the area where we're gonna bend it. We'll get it here in the vise real quick and uh, bend it up the way that we need. Bring it towards us just a little bit. Okay. There's our band off our template. That's pretty good, let's go test it out. All right, and as we mock this thing up, we see that it fits pretty good in here. It's gotta do a little bit of tweaking along the way, but this should weld in pretty good. And we'll trim the bottom edge and uh, that should be it. Get this side finished up. tacked it in we'll get those welds ground down and this thing will be done there's one more thing we just drilled through here a couple spot welds obviously get this connected to the flange that's behind it but then it's done and that's what it looks like after evening out the welds on there pretty good all right now i'm getting this little tab that i made here on this bottom piece to replicate these little upward downward um kind of cuts that the factory made in these rear panels as they lined up with the base of the trunk floor in this back panel. So as I'm welding here, I've also got this nice thick pad. It's a piece of really thick foam. Just nice to sit down and actually be a little bit comfortable as I'm working. I've always got my welders, so this way I always try to start off a new weld with a new fresh cut. So this way, you know, for example, you see this blued out area here on the tip of the welding wire from the last weld. I like to start out with a new fresh snip and then uh, we continue along the way, holding it in place, kind of working it as we need to. If I gotta move it in to kind of match it up, so this way we get a nice clean butt weld, I'll hold up here and push against as I weld. Just stuff like that, just to get nice clean work done. Uh, once we knock this out, then we can address this, that one, and then we can head to that wheel well finally. tack it in like that and then we'll get a nice final weld along the whole piece for the finish. Hey, there it is. Now we can go ahead and just grind those welds down nice and evenly, and uh, that's what we needed. We can kind of just get this shape here, get this corner a little bit rounded, a little bit rounded, make it all look nice and even, consistent. That's what you want right there.
Okay, you can see as I'm grinding too, you gotta be really careful. Obviously, we're taking off the high parts. You can see here, I've got it mostly flush coming down and how here where I haven't touched it yet. And as you're grinding, you wanna keep yourself nice and flat as much as you can. And you wanna stay perpendicular relative like this. Imagine my finger is the weld bead and I'm grinding on top of it right now. If you're like this, too much on one side, you're gonna start cutting into the top side here on this panel and you're actually gonna weaken the metal and maybe it could even burn through. Or if you're the other way and you're grinding too far this way, you'll uh, wind up cutting through too much on the bottom side. So you're here, you're flat, you don't wanna be like this, you don't wanna be like that. And being really kind of slow and careful, you can see that this is probably, I think a 60 grit or maybe even a, probably a 60 grit here on this mini belt sander, which is a little bit aggressive. Um, and then I could finish it off with a little bit lighter um, into the future. But as you get a little bit more experience with it, you can kind of start with a little bit more aggressive and not cut through and burn through and make too much of a problem. But if anything, if you're new to this, you may want to start out with 80, maybe 120, something a little bit lighter and take it nice and smooth. You could also get a flap disc on here. You can get a, you know, an angle grinder. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But just remember as you're grinding though, if this surface isn't totally flat, if you've got a contour, you know, you're gonna wind up cutting into something up here or down here. So you just gotta keep that all in mind that whenever you're grinding, be mindful of what else is around it that's being taken down with it. You don't wanna carve, you know, an ugly groove into something else that you're not intending to be grinding on. So this is like a, a gray scotch bright equivalent, which is almost the level of polishing. It's not really gonna take off a whole lot of metal, but still I can kind of show you how we can clean up this area right here that we started with and get rid of those rough 60 grit grind marks. Again, looks nice and fancy and shiny on the camera, but that's not something you're gonna to wanna to actually prime over either because you wanna have a nice 80 grit before you prime. This just makes it look, pr look pretty for you, but in real reality, you want a little bit more grit than that because you're gonna have mechanical adhesion that the primer is gonna to need to stick to. Just kind of showing you here how, um, once we smooth this down, you know, how flush we are and what it ultimately looks like. So that hopefully helps you out a little bit in seeing what I'm doing. So yeah, this hopefully helps you out in seeing what I'm doing. I wouldn't use something like this to take all this down. It's just way too light. It's not gonna cut the way you need it to cut. So uh, we'll continue back on here. And again, lots, lots of ways to skin the cat. You can always use a lot of different kind of tools and techniques to do the job you want to do. This is what was here too, just to give you guys some reference. So it's a side piece here that's kind of missing that goes and connects in this area here. Um, there's this main area that's missing off the back of where it connects here into the frame rail. And there's actually this kind of thick plate that goes on top, which I'm gonna to have to get a bead roller and try and replicate because this thing is way, way too far gone to fix. Um, the other one on this side isn't too bad. We'll be able to work around this one, but this one here is in pretty bad shape. So this is what was here and we're gonna recreate this whole thing. All right, so I cut the exhaust out of the way because that exhaust wasn't really that good anyway. I'll use it just for like a beat around car someday while well the back up. Uh, I cut this area here out of the bottom, got this out of the way just because one, it's really pitted and I don't want to reuse it. And two, it kind of gives us a little bit more room to work, but we'll re we'll replicate this here um, coming up soon. But these two bolts here, you can see these two bolts had broken off previously. And what I'm going to do is get a nut held up right against this area here and then weld it and then hopefully that weld is strong enough and the rust that's inside the threads here connected to where it's going through there is uh, able to break free and we can actually just, you know, wrench this thing off. If not plan B, we'll just have to tap it from the bottom side and progressively drill it up through smaller to bigger to bigger to bigger drill bits until it basically eliminates the entire thing and then we can pull out the remaining shards of it. That's it, but right now we're gonna go ahead and weld this on here. Got that sucker burnt in there. So let's see. We cannot get this thing broke free. It came off, I did it off camera, but uh, I tried moving this thing and it snapped off. And that's the second time this has done this now. So looks like this isn't gonna work. This metal is too brittle on the old bolt and it's not welding up and really adhering good. So plan B, drill it out. And just like that, just keep drilling up through it until we get 
all the way out. All right, and plan C, because drilling that was just taking forever and I was getting a shower of metal shavings and it was just, you know, it's a long bolt to drill all the way up through and plus it wasn't going centered. Screw it. So we're just gonna cut this whole stupid area out of here. And then we will make a little patch with a square of metal with a new threaded piece. And then weld this back in and then there'll be a fresh threaded area for this bolt to go. And this bolt is one that connects along with the bumper when the bumper goes onto the car. So I've got some steel the same thickness of that frame rail. I've gone ahead and traced out where that piece was. And then we're gonna drill this out. We'll weld a nut onto there and then that'll be uh, our new piece. All right, we've got this welded in here. Now we can continue finishing this whole area. Replicated this bottom piece, which is gonna go nicely right down here and get us capped off and finished up. Right, it's welded in there, it looks pretty good. We've got this bottom side here done too. You can go ahead and just get the rest of this cleaned up, fix this little spot that's missing here, and then we'll get this extension part that's missing that extends out and fills in this, and then we'll have to create this new bracket that is this pretty, Pretty sturdy, probably a sixteenth of an inch thick plate that supports the bumper when it goes on here. So, looking on the back side of this one though, it's actually pretty bad. You know, unfortunately, gonna have to pull this whole one off and fix that one too, the same way that we did here. But at least, hey, we knocked it out. We know what we're doing. All right, guys, make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. We're gonna cover actually recreating this bracket for the bumper, get that in place here on the back of the car, and then make the repair on that side and do the same exact thing. So. Stay here for more. What are you doing, Elliot? Should we go check up on the Roadrunner and see how it's looking? Come on, buddy. Let's go check it out. Puppy boy. What do you think, Inspector? How's the work looking? Elliot approves. For those of you guys that have been watching our videos for a while, you can see how big our Elliot has gotten. If you remember back our first video with him August of 2021, I think it was. This little puppy boy. He's a big doggy now. 76 pounds. Good boy, Elliot.